ECOWAS leaders call for debt forgiveness as part of Panicia to the effect of COVID-19 on the continent. Federal government April 2020 bond oversubscribed by more than 400 percent. Global commodities rally as efforts to protect economies permeate. We are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital, and I am Muplang Dakok. So good to know you're with us on Business Express. Leaders of the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS Thursday, advocated total debt cancellation for African countries to enable the continent to survive the post-coronavirus era. Chairman of the ECOWAS and President of the Republic of Niger, Muhammadu Yusufo, alongside other leaders, raised alarm over the devastating effects of the deadly virus on human and economies of member states and called for collaborative efforts among the member states to combat the pandemic. President Muhammadu Buhari participated in the extraordinary meeting via teleconference in Abuja. Guiding public finances, revenues are declining drastically due to the fall in commodity prices. At the same time, government continues to spend massively on the containment of the virus. Medical care for those infected and minimizing the impact of the crisis on the poor and vulnerable. This situation puts severe pressure on our finances by increasing our expenditures and dwindling revenues. This invariably has led to a restructuring and reduction of our budget. And amidst the ravaging effects of COVID-19 and subsequent crash in oil prices, the three tiers of government still got up to 780.926 billion naira raised in the month of March to share at the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee FAC meeting. A statement of accounts issued by the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, FAC, in Abuja, indicates that the amount comprised statutory revenue, value-added tax, VAT, and exchange gain. Balance in the excess crude account now stands at $72.221 million. The statement by Hensho Ogubuke, Director of Information at the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, revealed that in the month of March, taxes, duties, and royalties all recorded substantial increases. The monthly meeting was held through virtual conferencing due to the lockdown in Abuja and some states of the Federation, occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. Nigeria crude recorded oil and gas export sale of $434.85 million in January 2020, an increase of 94.30% pitched against the December 2019 figures. The NNPC monthly financial and operations report released in Abuja stated that the corporations group managing director of public affairs, Dr. Kenin Obateru, said the month's crude oil export sales contributed $336.65, amounting to 77.42% of the total dollar transactions for the period, compared to the $136.36 million sales in the previous month. It added that export gas sales in January amounted to $98.20 million, even as it noted that 2019 to January 2020 crude oil and gas transactions valued at $5.18 billion was exported. 
The document said vandalism of NNPC pipelines across the country recorded a spike of 50% increase in January with 60 pipeline points vandalized compared to the 40 incidents recorded last December. Ola Bode Shonwumi is an energy expert and joins us via Skype to look at the implications of the prevailing market circumstances on the Nigerian economy. Thank you so much for joining us on Business Express today. Thank, thank you for having me okay. and good afternoon. Afternoon. So what exactly is the energy market looking like presently? For instance, the price of Brent has fallen below cost of production. And for instance, beginning of this week, we saw West Texas uh, intermediate oil drop to less than zero dollar per barrel before picking up. So how is the market generally? Well, to begin, um, there's nothing totally strange, primarily because w what is happening is the result of features. Um, but before I go into the details of what features market are and all of that, it is important to note that the oil and gas industry is a lot more than just the production and the sales of crude. Because after the crude is sold, uh, the, real value, the real value starts. And uh, oil is used in more than 6,000 different items from pharmaceuticals in terms of capsules, is used in perfume, is used in cosmetics, is used in plastics, is used in coal tar, is used in inks for pens. I mean, there are so many items that oil is used for that just based on the sheer need of oil, it will have its value. Now, the, uh, the, the, the price that we saw that um, collapsed is, is a features market. And it's basically like uh, somebody is coming to, uh, let, let's say you have a friend coming to your house, uh, primarily because nobody was going to be at home. And all of a sudden, everybody's at home, including all your children that were in boarding house and all of that, and you are not able to accommodate them at home anymore. The result is that you need to send those friends of yours to somewhere where they can stay. Incidentally, all the hotels are also full. So as a result, you have people that you have invited who cannot stay in your hotel, who cannot stay in your room. So you are just looking for a way just to, I mean, just to accommodate them. That's like the kind of scenario that we experienced with um, with the crude features, crude prices that made the price go to negative. So those the negative prices and positive prices are technically artificial. Mm -hmm. It's no way indicates the real value of the of the of the product. Okay, so if that's how the market is right now, are there implications for Nigeria? For instance, basically because Nigeria depends largely on oil for revenue. Well, when we talk about crude oil for Nigeria, there are two ways. There's first of all crude oil for revenue, which is our largest source of forex. But there's also um, crude oil in terms of uh, petroleum products available like diesel, like uh, petrol, and all of that. The global economy, and this is not just petroleum oil and gas industry alone, the global economy is having a crisis because of the COVID pandemic. So whether it is the aviation industry, whether it is the food industry, whether it is, I mean, everywhere there are issues. So the issues that affects the petroleum industry is not because it's petroleum, but it's because the global economy itself is on a lockdown. And what you would normally use petrol to do, you can't do with it. But the truth be told is that we are one of those industries that we are technically essential because even with the pandemic all over the world, everybody has considered activity within the rig, within um, gas pipelines and all of that to be essential. So people are moving. So as soon as the pandemic is over, people are going to get into their cars and move around. They are going to get into planes and they will fly around. All those things require petroleum products. So of course, they are going to need more. The factories will start to work. Every oil that is needed in those places will start to appear. Those that are using make manufacturing, fertilizer, plastics, I mean, whatever. So the industry will come up. 
Okay, as so are you saying are you saying that there's no cause for alarm? Really, there's no cause for alarm. There's no there's no cause for alarm at all. Okay, but looking at the situation at hand, can Nigeria hold sway this year without the regular or the normally uh, generated revenue from oil? Well, that will be for the economic planners to decide. What okay. we can talk about mm -hmm. is the possibility of income that can come in. Mm -hmm. The truth be told is that anybody can go through a crisis. Any family, a family could have been on an income of uh, 20 million a year, and all of a sudden it goes to 2 million a year. They'll still survive. I mean, they're not going to commit suicide. So if all revenue dwindles, uh, it will provoke changes. Um, there have been crises in all periods of our lives, even as individuals, we survive it. So even the nation, as it goes through its own crisis, those who are adult, who are uh, the responsibility for governance will need to look at dynamics, changes, things that they can do within their capability and think out of the box, manage the economic uh, circumstances. We as energy experts can just basically talk about innovative ways to uh, grow okay. and meet our own local demand, look at how we can get income out of it. But when the income comes in, some people still need to manage it. That's where the economists and the financial analysts come to play. Okay, Mr. Shawomi, um, do you see or do you think that Nigeria should look more into uh, local refining to be able to reduce losses? Well, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> and to be honest, there's nobody that has said we should not look into local refining. The challenge has been the policy flip-flop on the part of government. It is important to note that when certain things need to move beyond ideas uh, and policies into reality, it goes beyond one government. The challenges we've been having is that a particular government enacts a policy and say privatization of refineries. The next government comes and says that the privatization process was fraudulent. It cancels it, goes for a law, and then another one comes in and says we need to privatize. If a government is privatizing the refinery, it is important, it is essential, it is the right thing for the next government to realize that government is a continuum. So it is that process over two, three, four periods of governance that will allow what we what is on paper to become a reality. Okay. But as long as we continue to have policy somersaults, as long as we continue to have reversals, we will continue to just talk about a lot of things in paper. There is no doubt. Okay. That, um, what about uh, storage of excess crude? How well is Nigeria performing in that regard? Well, Basically, we talk about revenue from excess crude when the when the price of crude, the price at which crude is being sold exceeds the price at which the budget at which crude was budgeted. In simple terms, if the budget for crude was like fifty dollars and all of a sudden the, the price gets to like seventy dollars, then twenty dollars becomes something that's extra budgetary, which needs to be kept in a specific account or reappropriated by the National Assembly. Now, what has happened in periods of this boom is that um, they have been kept, but not properly saved. Nations are trying to cut production because they say uh, th there's a lot of oil. So what I'm saying is, is Nigeria doing well in terms of storing that excess crude that is generated? Well, whatever crude that you have or whatever storage capacity that you have is a capacity. That capacity is going to get full at some point. So it is not about doing well in storage. It is actually the fact that at some point we need to cap the oil well and stop producing because it's, it's a simple matter of um, demand and supply. If the people who are, to, who are responsible for demand are not putting pressure on the demand such that we are just supplying without demand. The price will go down and there will be excess of it. In fact, for 
for the last two, three weeks, the normal consumers have not been buying uh, crude. It is the speculators that have been buying and storing. So the rumor going around is that virtually all the major storage facilities over, all over the world have been filled with uh, crude. And that's why nobody's really buying. All right. So we hope to recover from the pandemic. Uh, what would you say are the lessons for Nigeria post COVID-19? Well, that's talking the about lessons, the energy sector. Yes. Yes. But the lessons are, I mean, there are lessons that we have seen all over the years. I mean, it's not, they're not something really new. The first thing is that the oil industry needs to be relevant to the person on the street. In other words, it needs to be a greater source of income. There are certain aspects of the industry that needs to come alive, uh, particularly in the downstream and the midstream sector. Uh, of course, uh, when it comes to things like demand and supply, global demand and supply statistics, there's limited issues we can do to that because we are part of the global oil and gas industry. But uh, if, with respect to the need for maturity in the industry, I believe that that's, that's one obvious thing that, that we need, that we can pick out of all this. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Olabode Shonwomi, an energy expert, for joining us today on the program. Thank you. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja. The program continues after this break. Let me assure Nigerians that all COVID-19 intervention funds are safe in the Treasury single account and that government is still open to donations in this regard. Government has opened special accounts with five commercial banks which are directly linked to the Treasury single account. Donated funds are safe in the Central Bank of Nigeria. For verifiable information about the funds and other financial obligations of the federal government, Please contact us directly at the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The account details for the donations are as follows. Meanwhile, the federal government is taking what it describes as a decisive action against transport operators who hide on the free movement of agricultural produce to carry passengers. This is coming with the inauguration of a joint technical team of emergency response to COVID-19 by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Sabo Nanono. Musa Baba Aliu reports. One thing we will not tolerate, and this is something very important that transport unions should note, that any movements of goods, agricultural input, should not be accompanied by passengers. This is a very clear instruction that we have to give to all the transporters, uh, so that you stop them in at the point of embarking, so that we do not have that kind of problem. Uh, we are trying as much as possible to ease your job, but take into consideration that you will cover the entire country. Uh, it's not only uh, here and there, but the whole country. Identify areas where there are problems, you have to set up communication uh, network, how to garner information and ensure that we have unrestricted movement of On that note, let's see how commodities are faring on the global markets.
Meanwhile, the African Export Import Bank has announced a $3 million grant to complement continental efforts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Afriexim Bank President Professor Benedict Orama, who made the announcement in Cairo, said the grant was in response to a request by African heads of state through the African Union Chairperson Cyril Ramaphosa. He said that a significant proportion of the grant would go to the COVID-19 special fund set up by the African Union as well as to the African Center for Disease Control, hoping that the contribution will help address some of the immediate needs. Orama encouraged other African banks, funds, operations and charity organizations to also contribute to the relief efforts. The bank has also set aside $200 million for use in financing the production of COVID-19 equipment and supplies within Africa. The Nigerian stock market continued on an encouraging path as investors take advantage of cheap equities. The All Share Index rose by 0.57% to end at 22,599.38 basis points, while market capitalization ended at 11.777 trillion naira. 211 million shares worth 2.2334 billion naira were traded in 3,957 deals. GT Bank, FBN Holdings, and Access Bank dominated activities. And on the global scene, oil prices continued their comeback from a recent slum, but stock markets are yet to totally recover. Bosede Abel has a summary of global stocks. Global markets opened the 24th day of April mostly negative over reports that raised doubt about a potential coronavirus treatment. European stocks opened lower as traders looked ahead to fresh economic data. FTSE 100 dropped 0.78%, CAC 40 0.58% and DAX 0.76%. Stocks in Asia declined as well with the Shanghai Composite at 1.06% lower at 2,808.53. Hang Seng Index was 0.61% lower as of its final hour of trading, while Nikkei Shed 0.86% to close at 19,262. U.S. stocks futures were little change in early trading as investors continue to weigh the prospect of the potential coronavirus treatment. Dow Jones Industrial Average was 0.17%, while S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite were low. Africa stocks continue to strive as most stocks posted gains. Nairobi's All Share, Tunisia's Tunidex, Ghana's GSE Composite, and Namibia's Overall Index appreciated, while South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 depreciated by 0.71%. And time now to see how the Naira is faring alongside other major currencies. With that we've come to the end of this edition of business express we value your feedback so keep the comments coming the observations and suggestions as well be informed that all previous episodes are available on youtube on nta's channels you can also communicate with us on twitter the handle is at nta news now and don't forget to use the hashtag bizx remember to always wash your hands with soap under running water as the war battles covid19 and stay safe business express returns monday i am muplang dakok <music>